Hello and welcome to the Westwards Mini Masterclass podcast. I'm your host, James Roy. Today I'm in conversation with Western Sydney writer and author of The F Team, Rawa Arja. So I'm talking today to Rawa Arja. Rawa is a member of the Western Sydney Writers Women's Writers Collective Finishing School. Uh, her writing is featured in a book published by Picador called Arab Australian Other. She has also been a uh, the Westwards Varuna Emerging Writers Fellow and has presented at SBS Voices and the Sydney Writers Festival. And Rawa also teaches creative writing at, uh, at schools and in after school workshops. And I believe you're a teacher as well, as well Rawa. Is that correct? Yes, I've been teaching for about 10 years, mostly primary. And then the last year, I've been doing a little bit of high school, which is two different worlds, but very different. Cool. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> so, Thank you for joining us on our mini masterclass. I ask you to talk about character. So off you go. Let's talk about character. What do you want to tell us? Well, um, so a bit of backstory about me. I sort of, I hated reading as a kid. I never read because I found it boring and I would much rather watch TV. I was one of those kids. Um, and then growing up, uh, sort of a tragedy. Well, the September 11 changed my life because uh, watching TV wasn't fun anymore. Uh, and just through all my favorite TV shows, there was always news ads, breaking news, and sort of reminding me that I was somehow the bad guy. And so in order to escape that craziness or that part of the world, I sort of turned to reading, and it sort of was an escape for me. Um, but what I found in reading uh, growing up is I couldn't connect with a lot of the characters, which is why now, looking back, is why I sort of didn't like reading. It's only because I couldn't make a connection to the world I was living in. So character to me was very important and it was looking for Ella Brandy by uh, Melina's book. Um, that changed my life because though she was a Lebanese, um, I'm Lebanese, mm-hmm. uh, it, I sort of I connected with a, a young Italian girl struggling through her HSC and family relationships and et cetera. And it changed my life. And I thought to myself, wow, a character like this made me feel as though I matter, where previously I didn't feel my story or my voice mattered. And so character had a huge influence on me, and then sort of my reading journey began from there. I don't want to give people too much kind of uh, ability to work out age if you're funny about it, but um, roughly were you, in, were you in early high school? How old were you when, when September 11 occurred in 2001? I was 12. You're 12, right, right. So that's a 12, that's a fairly yeah, 12, that's a fairly difficult kind of period for trying to find yeah. your identity anyway, and so that must have been anyway. Yeah, as a, as a yeah, young Muslim difficult. girl, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was very difficult because high school, as you said, finding identity in UI is just difficult, and then a huge curveball, basically um, an unexpected one, a tra- tragedy, sort of changed the way. I had to see myself and had to sort of conduct myself and who I was. and But, you know, um, it sort of worked out in a way that it made me at a younger age reflect more deeply um, and see the world in a way, sort of grow up quickly, basically. Um, and I understood that I was going to go through things that others probably wouldn't. And so, yeah, that, that it happened when I was 12 or 13 years old and I was only seven. So high school in itself changing is difficult. And I remember it was September in the 7th, 2001. Yeah, I, I remember that the, the day that that all occurred. I was um, I was working as a registered nurse at the time, but my wife and I were watching. Uh, I think we were watching The West Wing late at night, and so and they went to an ad break. It was on Channel Nine at that stage. Went to an ad break, and during the ad break, they started talking about the, the breaking news from from New York. And I'm looking at Vic, going, "This is weird. This is a." The West Wing's got yeah. a, an Australian news presenter. She said, "No, honey, this isn't the West Wing anymore. This is this is real life." And it was just, <laughs> this is real, yeah. It was yeah. quite surreal, wasn't it? So, um, and that's yeah. that's coming from me, not from somebody who was kind of, um, in many people's eyes, implicated by association. I suppose. Yeah, and I, I remember thinking to myself, being so young, going, "I didn't know the effects." So mm. I was still living in a bubble. I grew up in Punchbowl. I, I went to school in Punchbowl, and I. So, later, many years later, I worked in Punchbowl. So really, I'm still in a bubble. Um, and it's only until I step out of that bubble and I'm like, oh, okay, this is this could get a little bit tricky. I need a plan B, C, D, or three, <laughs> two through Z to, to understand or, you know, un- like things can happen that are not in my control. And so I really, at that time, I secluded back and I stayed in my bubble because it was just safer for me. 
what I'm hearing you say is that you're um, you, you're kind of given a you kind of have a choice as a writer whether you opt to be a plot driven writer or a character driven writer, and you've obviously leaned towards the character side of it. And you you put you put oh, yeah. this as being really one of the driving forces that made you opt for that. Is that that's what you're saying? Yeah, definitely. I think it was one of many factors, uh, that and then the lack of reading all throughout high school, um, just family, uh, <clears throat> the place where I live, socially, economically, et cetera. Um, and then really what cemented it for me is when I started teaching and I realized I thought who I was was a thing of the past. And then when I started teaching, I realized it's still here. It's the, the kids that I'm teaching still don't like to read. Um, the, the effects of through generations, uh, it's still there, it's still present. And it was just, I thought, I was like, okay. And I was always one of those people that waited for other people to do things. And I realized change doesn't come about if you wait for other people to do things. And so I took it upon myself. I said, okay, I've got my experience in teaching, um, my personal experiences. And so that's how I sort of turned to writing. But it was never something I grew up like if someone said to me at 12 years old that at 30 I was going to have my first book published, I'd probably laugh. Actually, I'd, I would really laugh, actually. <laughs> it was just like, it was, it was probably more of a chance of me going to the moon than actually writing a book. Well, we're glad you didn't go to the moon. We're glad you wrote books. Because um, there's no, there's no libraries on the moon. So what would be the point, right? That's true. And I hate heights. I'm not and a space person. <laughs> hate heights. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a problem. Um, so let's talk about your process, how you approach character, because, I mean, we have we have lots of different approaches to writing. We we approach plot in a different way and we apl- approach um, setting and so forth. And while they're all tightly kind of linked, I want to talk today about how you approach this idea of creating a character in, in, your, in your fiction. Um, so growing up, I come from a family of seven. And then my parents, that's nine, and then they're all married and and have 16 nieces and nephews. So basically a thousand people in my uh, immediate family. So social and, distancing is an issue for you right now, right? Yes. I was just going to say, you have no idea of how many book ideas I have right now about my family with social distancing. They're struggling. And we, oh, and we live side by side. So we live in all, like three houses next to each other. And so we've had to barricade the fences because... They can't come in. We're like, uh, uh-uh. which is for an introvert like me is heaven. I'm like, yes, this is this is what we're after. Um, but for me, uh, writing about characters seems to be easy because I draw on my personal experiences. I look mm-hmm. at my family and they all diverse um, personalities and really strong dynamic personalities. And I sort of take uh, the good and the bad even within myself, and and then I add them to the characters. So, for example, my uncle always answers question, answers your questions with a question. So if I ask him, you know, did you get that job? And he would say, did I get that job? Like, and I'd be like, wait, I don't, what? That's, that's so weird, but okay. And so for me being a quiet and shy person um, when I was younger, I sort of, I observed in a non stalkerish sort of way, um, human interaction and human behavior in my family. And I didn't know why I was so observant younger, but now that I'm writing a book or finish writing a book, I understand or everything sort of come full circle and understand why I was the way I was because there's so much rich content within a Lebanese family that I just basically take what I feel as though not only can kids sort of connect to and relate to, but what you don't sort of see that's the, that in, in books and in literature right now. Um, and so that's what I tried to do with my book, The F Team, is I actually wrote about my family and their names and they had no idea <laughs> until I was like, um, the book's sort of published now and you guys are in it. They were like, wait, what? I was like, yeah, you know, I was like, like you're not going to sue me. You're my sister. But, you know, all nice things, but... You might yeah, end up with so a thousand me, lawsuits from your thousand relatives if you're not careful. <laughs> Yeah, it's true, true. Um, but uh, I try to do it in a way where I, you know, my uncle, he has bees. Like he does that in real life and I took that. But I sort of exaggerated it a little to make it, uh, I guess, fit the more humorous side. Um, well, that, that, so was actually, me, that was actually going to be my question, you know, is that if you have, let's say, a, um, a characteristic like the one you've described, your uncle who answers questions with questions, you could just do what, 
he does. But have you seen that as an opportunity to actually use that for a misunderstanding that will lead to a drama or do you accentuate that aspect of it? Like how, how are you using those sorts of things to actually infiltrate the other parts of writing a story, the plot and the complications, that sort of thing? How does Has that contributed? So the minor characters, not really. They just, so for example, like the minor characters, they don't, they just sort of add to the little parts of the plot line. But like the major characters, yes, definitely. So Tarek, who's the main character, is a 15-year-old Arab kid from Punchbowl. And his personality and he, the way he deals with things, his uh, interactions, his relationships, et cetera, are everything that I experienced not only my teaching years, but I mentored many students um, or many kids, basically, sorry, um, in the area. And so, for example, male anger or anger in itself is a really big one. And it's a big theme in my story and one that I don't really read about. You said male anger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. Male anger is a really big theme um, in the story. And because I struggled as a teacher to find literature to – sort of influence young kids in the way they live their life, just the way Looky Fyler Brandy did for me. And I, I'm, I struggle. I can't find anything that will not only connect to the kids, but sort of, I don't want to be didactic in my writing, but to yeah. sort of teach them and find yeah. some guidance because unfortunately the support networks that these kids have aren't the best. And so uh, I try to do a lot in the book where kids can sort of close their door to their room and just read it and and just escape for whatever it is situations that they are in and so the main characters um the characters were developed based on the bigger things in the story and issues that i wanted to bring across definitely so there's a couple of ways to look at this i mean you could go they're closing the door of their room and they want to sink into something that's a bit escapist um, but then yeah. you're also you're also attempting to have characters in that book that they recognise. How do those two things work together? So for so I sort of uh, within each of the characters I put a part of myself in each of those characters, and for me it's like in terms of escaping, it's not really escaping what reality is. It's rather cementing that it's okay to feel whatever it is that they're feeling and that it's normal. And these are the ways maybe we can um, deal with it. It's more of a guidance sort of thing. And for them to understand and really know that a, that they do matter and their stories matter and they reflect in literature and that it's, uh, it's, they're not the only one. And if they, if they feel safe within the story and within the characters, it, they don't feel so lonely. Like, cause I, I felt like that heaps as a kid, I just sort of, felt detached to a lot of what I was reading and what I was reading always had something to do with school and school is a place where I spent most of my life. It's my second family. And so if you can't connect to a place that you spend a lot of time in, it's really difficult. Um, on top of everything else that these kids have to go through in terms of, you know, the social part, the economic part, uh, where, you know, uh, where they live, the suburb, punch bowl doesn't have the best reputation. Uh, so for me, it was just to cement the idea that, there's some sort of warmth around those characters. It was really interesting a couple of years ago as part of one of the Westwards things that uh, the camp where we actually, we, um, I worked with a whole bunch of boys from Punchbowl Boys High. And then we went to, I went to Lightning Ridge and worked with some students from up there. And then we put them together in a camp in the middle of the outback. And it was really interesting to watch, you know, all the, all the boys from Punchbowl, they were, wide-eyed because this was a lot of them had never been past the Nepean River and they're suddenly yeah. out in this huge you know we talk about big sky in Australia and that's it was a big sky situation and but they were kind of nervous about meeting the kids from from Lightning Ridge and the kids from <laughs> Lightning Ridge were kind of terrified of the of the Muslim boys from the inner city of Sydney the inner west and uh, or, the, or the greater west and um, the funny thing was when we when we put them all together the first thing we did was throw them a soccer ball and Within an hour, they were just, you know, it was just, um, yeah, it was remarkable really to, uh, to watch the similarities kind of conquer the differences. No, I see. I completely agree. I mean, my book is based on how sport can bring people together too. So it's boys from Punchbowl and boys from Cronulla sort of have to work together in a team. Um, and I think that was very important what you said about the soccer ball because 
Um, it might already be footy, it's rugby league, but same concept, same idea of working to a common goal. And so everything else, like politics, you know, identity, all that stuff sort of melts away. It doesn't matter anymore. And once you feel as though you're part of a team, you will do anything for your teammates. And so that, that spirit of brotherhood um, in my story is sort of what brings out the best of each character. So I use sport as a driving force. Do you think that, do you think there's a purpose to, I mean, do you think there's another purpose to using sport? Do you think that attracts certain readers that may not otherwise, may not otherwise go into those books? Yeah, definitely. I think I, you know, when I was doing my research for the book, um, I worked with a lot of kids in this area and outer area too. And I asked the boys, you know, if they love to read or if they like to read or what do they like to read? And they overwhelming majority said, we need, we want more books about sport. So, um, so definitely when I write, I definitely write for that reluctant reader because I was that reluctant reader. I've heard you talk about uh, something called inside versus outside. Yeah. With your characters. What, what, what's that all about? Talk about that. Um, so teaching young kids, uh, creative writing, it's difficult because it's a process. It takes a while. It's not something that you can, um, sort of master overnight. Um, and once kids understand that writing is a lifelong process, they ease into it and they feel as though it's not everything they write is wrong. Um, and something that I sort of came up with, but also that is, you can see anywhere on Google really is something called inside versus outside. And I always try to tell kids it's really important that when you write about your characters that not only you tell me what the character looks like, which is the outside part, which is your physical uh, appearance, but I really want to know the inside of the character, which is more about their personality, their thoughts, what drives them. Um, and the inside of the character really is where the reader connects with because that's where they find parts of themselves in the inside of the character because really physically we all look different and it's you know it's really rare that you connect on that physical sort of surface that level and i said if you want a good story like good stories always have characters that they're pretty much it's sort of flipped on the outside like the inside of a character is now out on the page and for all to see. So for my character, Tarek, which is the main character in the F team, he's not only does he, it's in first person, he tells a story, but within that there's his subconscious of what he thinks as well. So that's between him and the reader. So none of the other characters are let inside where he feels there. And that is almost like an intimate relationship where just the reader and the main character sort of go on this journey um, uh, separate or, you know, alongside everything else that happens in the story. So the inside really part is just telling kids that we need to know the, the mannerisms, the, the inside, the, the agenda, what drives them forward. Um, and I think once I tell kids that, they understand it and they focus more on that part instead of, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, you know, it was tall, all that stuff. Yeah, because I, I find all of that stuff kind of... Meaningless, really. I, I'm much, as, 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 as you say, much more interested in what's going on inside. And I think I really like that idea of setting up that dialogue effectively with the, with the reader because that then opens up that opportunity for you as a writer to play with the idea of unreliable narratives. One of my favourite writers, Kurt Vonnegut, he said that to make a story work, your character has to want something even if it's just a glass of water. How do you work out what it is your character wants and so that you can use that to help drive the story? Uh, for me, it was really because the main character is pretty much me in real life. It's just based on me. Except the and boy so, who plays soccer. Do you play yeah, soccer? No, but I, I play soccer. Yeah, I did. My father, yeah. my father put me in soccer, karate, and all these, like, taught me how to change a, like, a tire. Like, my father did all that stuff. Um, but interestingly, Tarek in Arabic means um, path or trying to find your path in life. Mm. And so it's a symbolic for me. I chose that name specifically to symbolize the idea of a young kid. It doesn't matter if he's Lebanese or whatever culture. Um, I, I sort of string the characters. There's eight main characters. These eight boys all are trying to find their path. They all are. It's like we said before, it's difficult being a teenager anyway, let alone everything that comes with it uh, these days, um, and particularly of kids of minority groups. Um, and so for me, I, I made the character 
uh, want to actually be a better person, but is is stuck. Like a lot of these kids are stuck. They don't have the 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 systems put in place or the, the the skills necessary to actually deal with emotions. And that's why I chose anger as one, um, because I felt that was very important. But um, what I, I sort of based the main character on what I would want. And what I would want is, is just to be a better person. And and it's complicated and where humans are unpredictable and relationships and family and et cetera. And so for me, that's how I came up with um basically Tarek's journey. Yeah, nice. Um, so I, I guess once you have that, that thing in place where he just wants to be a better person then you and you've identified what that is, then you can use the other aspects of his, his character to make that difficult for him to achieve, which kind of drives yeah. him forward. I don't yeah. know if it's a little bit off topic, but did you remember, do you know the book uh, Nips 11 by Ruth Starkey? You know that book? No. Yeah, she. It was. It came out probably maybe almost twenty years ago, but it, um, it's called Nips Eleven because it's a story about a whole bunch of kids who go to primary school who uh, they're all Chinese kids, and Japanese kids, Asian kids, and they want to play cricket because they see that the white kids and the Indian kids are all playing cricket and they want to play cricket, um, and yeah. so they set up a cricket team, and that's why it's called Nips Eleven, which is you know taking what's commonly known as a bit of a pejorative, but they've kind of subverted it, which or. or you know, reclaimed it, I guess, which is nice. But yeah, that was yeah. A, a sort of made when you're talking about um, finding uh, commonality through sport. That kind of that was the example that immediately popped into my mind. And the yeah. other one I'd recommend. Oh, really? Yeah, the other one that I'd recommend, and you may have may have read it, is um, the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian by Sherman Alexi. I don't know. If you've no, read. I haven't read that. That sounds so cool. Uh, it's 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 vaguely autobiographical, but it, it's um, he's a Native American kid who lives on a reservation and he's, he's got this really crappy life um, and they're desperately poor. And he goes, he's the only kid who goes to the local school that actually wants to be involved in learning and that includes the teachers. And so the parents scratch together all this money so that he can go to a Catholic school in town where he'll be with other people who want to learn. But of course, once he gets there, He's the only Native American American kid at this school. So once again, he doesn't fit in, but for a different reason. And then all the other kids yeah. go, because you're not white, then you must be good at basketball. Like That's not a crazy way that kids think. <laughs> and so suddenly he's, he's, yeah. he's expected to play basketball, but he's no good at basketball, you know. And it's, it's a great book. I really recommend that's it. Life. So that's we're kind of coming to the end of our little short time together. Um, was there anything oh. else you wanted to? Yeah, no, it's gone quickly, hasn't it? Is there anything else you wanted to talk to us about with um, with character? Who, who's your Who's your um, favourite character in 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 books that you've read? Yeah, I just finished reading, or not just finished. I, I've read a book. I don't know if you've read it um, by Walter Dean Myers. It's called Monster. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. It's It's really an incredible book about a kid called Steve Harmon, and he's sixteen. And he's a young black kid who is on trial for murder. Um, and it sort of goes through, it's, it's in first person, but he writes the story as though it's a, he turns his life in jail as a movie script because he believes that when he gets out, he's going to be, um, he wants to tell his side of the story, but through a movie. And it is, I never thought I would like a book like that. And I, I read it in one sitting. And the heartbreak in the way Walter writes, you know, uh, rather Steve's voice, it was, I was just crying the whole time. I, I actually felt like I was in jail and, and experiencing everything that a young 16, in, innocent 16 year old kid um, is, and I'm not black, like there's, there's no, like I have, I get the idea of me being Muslim and being Thailand and things like that, but I, I just thought that is, he's one of my favorite characters um, because he made me feel something that I thought I would never experience in my life. But, but then, um, then the writer has the writer's really achieved exactly what we would hope they would achieve. They've made somebody who isn't from that yeah. world, if you like, feel yeah. what it's like to be in that world. And that if you can do that yeah. as a writer, that's not, that's probably a pretty good place to leave it. You know, if, if you can achieve that as a writer. You've yes, um, really ticked one of the biggest boxes you've, you've got to try and tick. So, yes, um, definitely. Rawa, thank you so much for talking to us. You get a chance to plug your um, your website. So what is it? Share it with us. So my, <laughs> my website is uh, Rawa Aja 
rawaaja.author.com. I even forgot my website. There you go. So it's rawaaja.author.com. But a lot of what I do and my work is on my Instagram. So I, I link my website, et cetera, to my Instagram. And what's your Insta? Which is just, just rawaaja. Look, thank you so much for talking to me and um, talking to the Westwards uh, mini masterclasses today. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Yep, thank you so much.